and as a subcommittee with SB 1165, uh, thank you. We'll, uh, with Senator DeLeon and I believe Senator Lara will be presenting on behalf of Senator De, uh, DeLeon. Senator Lara. Thank you. 1465. Good morning, Mr. Chair members. I want to start by thanking the chair and the committee for allowing me to present SB 1465 on behalf of Senator Pro Tem de Leon. Uh, SB 1465 does two things. It provides the governor with the authority to negotiate and enter into agreements on behalf of the state and the International Olympic Committee and the International Paralympic Committee. And second, it provides financial assurance that, the requ uh, that is required to bid for the Olympic Games. The games are expected to bring significant financial and other benefits to the city of LA and the state of California. The increase in economic activity from hosting the Olympic Games are not just felt locally. In 1984, the Olympic Games contributed an extra $90 million in general fund sales tax revenue to the state. In addition to the increased economic activity that the games would bring, the bid committee is exploring holding preliminary rounds of certain sports such as basketball, soccer, and soccer across the state. California is also home to many of our U.S. athletes. We sent 127 athletes to the London Games in 2012, by far the most than any other state. California is also home to 23 U.S. athletes who competed in the Paralympic Games in London, again, the most than any other state. However, in order to make our Olympic bid competitive with those of other host city candidates, California must once again demonstrate support for the Games as it did through similar legislation in 2007 and 2002, which both passed with bipartisan support. The $250 million guarantee appears to be a large sum, but the bid is structured in a way that ensures profitability in the 2024 Olympic Games for the following reasons. No new major construction, conservative budgeting, contingency fund, broad insurance coverage plan, and before any state funds can be used, Los Angeles must first contribute $250 million to cover any liabilities. We feel very confident that the protection set in, uh, set in place will not only provide a successful Olympic Games, but a profitable one. Please help me in bringing the 2024 Olympic Games back to the great state of California. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Senator. You have uh, witnesses here to testify? Yes. Please. They'll turn it on. You guys stay with me, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Senator Lara. Thank you uh, to the Senate uh, pro tem for authoring the bill. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, my name is Casey Wasserman. I'm the chairman uh, of Los Angeles 2024 Exploratory Committee. That is the private nonprofit organization working to bring the 2024 Olympic Games to Los Angeles. Um, we began uh, in September of last year a two-year international campaign competing against three cities in Europe uh, to host the 2024 Olympic Games. Um, the central tenet of our uh, effort, we believe, is that what makes our bid unique is what makes California unique. And those are the attributes of sustainability, creativity and innovation, uh, and obviously our weather. Uh, and that, those are California traits, and hopefully LA is part of the vehicle to deliver those to the Olympic movement. This is a uh, competitive process. Uh, the other three bids are, are funded uh, per IOC regulations uh, by their federal governments. Our bid is privately funded through the first phase, um, but uh, government support, both at the local, the state, uh, in this country state, uh, perspective and the, and the national government uh, support is vital to our success with the International Olympic Committee. Uh, as the Senator said, the legislature has passed twice before bills that are uh, uh, sustainably similar to this bill, uh, and we believe that our, bill, our, our bid is uh, infinitely uh, more deliverable in a cost-effective manner than the previous bids presented uh, as part of the okay. bills before. Uh, we are committed to fiscal responsibility. Uh, we are truly unique in our ability to deliver against that in Los Angeles. Uh, and our, obviously our legacy of 1984 is to deliver a significant profit with significant impact uh, to leave a legacy uh, on the youth of Los Angeles. Uh, we're excited uh, by the process. We appreciate your consideration and uh, we look forward to uh, winning in September of 2017. Thank you so much for your testimony uh, and I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, you have another witness here to testify, Mr. Lara. Yes, please. Sylvia Solis, Shaw, on behalf of City of Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. 
uh, in strong support of the bill. Los Angeles has hosted prior Olympic Games in 1932, 1984, and we hope to bring the 2024 Summer Olympic Games to the city. Um, the city's 2024 Olympic bid was launched by a unanimous vote of support by the city council, um, has been endorsed by the U.S. Olympic Committee, as, and is, has enjoyed overwhelming support by the people of the city. Uh, we are uniquely prepared to host the Olympics, and in preparing the bid, we believe that it is one that is fiscally sound, one will, that will be successful not just for the city, but for the entire state as well. Um, this bill is very similar to prior legislation that has been passed with bipartisan support. Uh, we thank the pro tem for carrying this legislation, for Senator Laura for presenting today, and we ask for your I vote. Thank very you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, please. Hi, Christy Foy here on behalf of the city of Long Beach in strong support. And to successfully bring the games back to California, we must demonstrate that the bid has strong support from the state level. And we believe this bill does that. And we thank um, the members for bringing it forward for having it today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, any other witnesses in favor of the bill? Both the cities of Anaheim and San Diego, happy to support our sister city to the north. We think uh, the Olympic Games would be a benefit to the entire region, and we're happy to support the bill today. Thank you for your testimony. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Karen Lang on behalf of San Francisco Mayor Edwin Lee in support. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Greg Campbell on behalf of Ashley Swearingen, Mayor, Mayor of Fresno in support. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Campbell. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Are you... you I've never seen you at that mic before speaking. I'm trying to figure uh, out. It's my first time, Mr. Chairman. My goodness. Well, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Couldn't be happier to have it be in front of a better committee, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you've learned quickly. <laughs> Guys, let's give Mr. Campbell a round of applause. This is his first day. Uh, so, question, question for Mr. Campbell. I have a question for Mr. Campbell. Can he come back up here? <laughs> So, so, Mr. Campbell, you said you couldn't be happier and be in front of a better committee. You're saying this is better than health? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can't wait to be in front of a health committee. All right. We'll have All right. Much more thorough testimony for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, Thank you. And business and professions as well. Oh, Mr. Mr. Hill, I mean, I, <laughs> you and I are going to become fast friends soon. <laughs> and I can't wait to see him in appropriation. <laughs> I was in support, Mr. Chairman. Just... <laughs> Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Any witnesses in opposition? Please come forward. Uh, seeing none, uh, questions, comments, concerns from the members? Yes, uh, Senator Gaines. Thank you. I'm uh, very excited about the bid and uh, the prospect of it being profitable. I, obviously, there have been Olympic Games throughout the world that have had financial issues and actually lost a lot of money that had, where the tab had to be picked up by the government. and. Certainly in 84, we had a very successful, profitable Olympics in, in L.A. I had, the, I had the opportunity to watch some of those games. Uh, I've also uh, worked on trying to get the Winter Games. I represent Lake Tahoe, and we were working on a bid uh, there, but the USOC decided that the, the right priority was for a Summer Games versus a Winter Games. So I uh, fully support what you're doing and, and wish you the best in your bid. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Gaines. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Senator Lara, I'm very, very excited uh, about this, uh, this bid. I would like to be added as a co-author uh, and uh, look forward to doing whatever we can to make sure we return the Olympics uh, to Los Angeles. Uh, again, thank you for the presentation, the witnesses. Uh, we will, we are absent one member before we establish a quorum and we'll move this as soon as we do so. Senator, yes. the chair. Oh, Mr. Gaines. Would, uh, could I be a co-author also? Absolutely. That'd be great. We'll be Absolutely. We'll noted, noted. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, uh, Senator, would you like to close? I just respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank All you. right, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now uh, move to item seven, Senator Walk. Um, and sergeants, can you please call the absent members? Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Skyline Park is 850 acres of state-owned property. It's been leased to Napa County since 1979 and operated as a public park and natural area. It's been designated as surplus. 
In uh, 2010, 2279, a bill was introduced, which um, successfully passed the legislature, gave Napa the authority to begin uh, to purchase the property and ensure it remains a park. Um, for uh, a number of reasons, the state and Napa County um, uh, couldn't agree on a fair market value, um, but I would like to extend the sunset date, which this bill does, to allow that negotiation uh, to, com to be completed. Um, I have with me John Woodbury from the Napa County Regional Park and Open Space District to testify in support of the bill. I ask for your eye vote. Very good. Thank you, Senator. Yes, please begin. Hi, I'm John Woodbury with Napa County Regional Park and Open Space District, a mouthful. Uh, so Skyline Park was created by the community in 1980 uh, under a lease from the state through the Napa County process. Uh, it's loved in the community. It's located uh, next to Napa State Hospital, a hard rock quarry in a low income neighborhood. So literally it's between a rock and a hard place. But it is loved by the people of the county. This is probably the, the biggest park next to the city of Napa, which is the biggest city in the, in the county. Um, the one issue that's been raised, I guess, about concern is about affordable housing. I'd just like to point out that Napa County does have a certified housing element. Uh, we have approved just under 1,000 units of housing and very close to this. Napa has affordable housing? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. And we've met our fair share relative? housing requirements. Well, ABAC sets up the, the requirements. Okay. So. All right. That's good and to that's know. all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. My name is Molly Radigan from the County of Napa here in support of this bill, and I second everything that Mr. Woodbury said. Thank you so much. Any other witnesses in support? Please come forward. Witnesses in opposition? Questions, comments, concerns from the members? Senator, would you like to close? I just asked for your I vote. Very good. Thank you. We'll take this up as soon as we establish a quorum. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Senator Liu. Item 21, SB 1442. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Thank you, Senator. Um, SB 1442 is a simple bill that deletes redundant provisions and creates an effective centralized mechanism for implementation implementing the laws prohibiting discrimination in state-funded programs. For unknown reasons, the state's uh, Health and Human Service Agency is currently designated as the overall administrator of Section uh, 11135 claims. This section primarily focuses uh, in the prohibition of discrimination in state-funded programs. <laughs> And the state's entity to enforce anti-discrimination laws is the Department of Fair Housing, uh, Employment and, and, and Housing. So it's the most logical choice um, to administer Section 11135. This bill is sponsored by the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, and here to testify is Director Kevin Kish. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Begin. Senator. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, I am the Director of the Department of Fair Employment and Housing. We accept complaints of civil rights violations, about 20,000 a year, uh, violations of uh, various laws, including the Fair Employment and Housing Act, which gives us our name, the UNRWA Civil Rights Act, the Ralph Civil Rights Act, and the Disabled Persons Act. Uh, Section 11135 is part of the constellation of state laws prohibiting discrimination, but for historical reasons, the authority for enforcing it has lain elsewhere. Um, broadly, it prohibits discrimination in state-funded programs. Much of what it prohibits is equally prohibited by the Fair Employment and Housing Act or the UNRWA Civil Rights Act. So we believe that this bill consolidates responsibility for enforcement of civil rights protections in the place in state government where the most expertise resides. Um, we're aware of some apprehension about what will happen to um, what is frankly a, a very extensive regulatory framework uh, that is now located in the Social Security title of the Code of Regulations and we're working with stakeholders and happy to work with the Senator and this body um, to make sure that there aren't any unintended consequences. Very good, thank you. Do you have another witness in favor? I don't think so. Okay, any other witnesses in support? Please come forward. Hi, Margaret Johnson with Disability Rights California. We are in support of the bill and we're one of the groups that was concerned about the regulations and we're pleased to work with the department and others on ensuring that those regs are maintained that need to be maintained. And we really appreciate the department's willingness to do that. Thank, thank you, you for your testimony. Any other witnesses in support, please come forward. Witnesses in opposition. Questions, comments, concerns from the members? 
Senator, would you like to close? Well, I am committed to uh, continue working with the stakeholders to manage this transition period and um, simply ask for your I vote. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your interest in this and we'll move this out as soon as we establish a quorum. We have the members. Yep. All right, we'll establish a quorum now. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Hall. Aye. Hall present. present. Berryhill. Here. Berryhill present. Block. Gaines. Here. Gaines present. Galgiani. Here. Galgiani present. Glazer. Hernandez. Here. Hernandez present. Hill. Hill present, Weso, Laura, Laura present, McGuire, Runner, Vidak. All right, a quorum has been established. Is there a motion on the bill? It's been moved by Senator Laura. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is do pass and re refer to the Judiciary Committee. Hall? Yes. Hall, I, Berryhill. Aye. Berryhill, I, Block. Gaines? Aye. Gaines, I, Galgiani. Galgiani, I, Glazer. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, I, Hill. Aye. Hill, I, Weso. Laura? Aye. Laura, I, McGuire. Runner? Bidak? All right, that bill has seven, uh, seven eyes, which uh, is enough to get out. We'll keep the roll open for the absent members. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Pardon me? Yes, let's move the consent calendar. A motion on the consent has been moved by Senator Hernandez. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Consent calendar consists of item one, item five, item eight, item 14, Item 18 and item 23 on the agenda. Hall? Aye. Hall, I. Berryhill? Aye. Berryhill, I. Block? Gaines? Aye. Gaines, I. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, I. Glazer? Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, I. Hill? Aye. Hill, I. Weso? Laura? Aye. Laura, I. McGuire? Runner? Vida? Okay, that has seven. We'll keep the roll open for the absent members. We'll take up item 22, SB 1465. The bill has been moved. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Item 22, SB 1465, De Leon. Motion is do pass and re refer to appropriations. Hall? Aye. Hall, I. Berryhill? Aye. Berryhill, I. Block? Gaines? Aye. Gaines, I. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, I. Glazer? Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, I. Hill? Aye. Hill, I. Weso? Laura? Aye. Laura, I. McGuire? Runner? Vidak? That bill has seven ayes. Uh, we'll keep the roll open for the absent members. We'll take up item seven, SB 1119, Senator Wolk. Madam Secretary, is there a motion on the bill? It's been moved by Senator Ricardo Lara. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is do pass and re refer to appropriations. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Berryhill? Aye. Berryhill, aye. Block? Gaines? No. Gaines, no. Galgiani? Galgiani, aye. Glazer? Hernandez? Hernandez, aye. Hill? Hill I. Weso, Laura, Laura I. McGuire, Runner, Vidak. Okay, that bill had. Barry Hill I. To no. Okay, that bill has five uh, eyes, two no's. We'll keep the roll open for the absent members. Uh, we'll now hear uh, SB 1012 by Senator Wynn. Please come forward. Good, no, good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and, and members of the committee. Today I am pleased to present SB 1012. I am happy to accept the committee's recommendation to amend the definition of American manufacturer to make it consistent with the existing law and also add Assemblymember Mainshine as a co-author. Thank you. Secretary would note. This bill would simply require that all American or California flags purchased by state or local governments would taxpayers dollars come from American manufacturers. The California Department of General Services currently purchases national flags, the fabric, products, enterprise at Central California's Women's Facility in Chochilla. However, there is no requirement to purchase American or California flags from this facility or from any other manufacturer in our nation. Local governments purchase flags from a variety of sources. The greatest symbol of our national Pride is the American flag. It makes sense to have both our American and California flags manufactured by, manufactured by Americans here at home in the United States. California should not weaken our symbol of national pride by allowing government to purchase American or California flags with taxpayers' dollars from non 
American sources. The bill has received support from the main United USA Foundation and many of the veterans organizations in California. Today, I am joined by Pete Connolly, representative of the California Veterans Association. Thank you. Uh, please Thank go you, ahead. Mr. Chairman, members. Pete Connolly, representing the veterans groups that are listed in your analysis, probably about a million veterans. Uh, as everyone is aware, veterans groups take respect for the flag very seriously, and we believe this measure will help uh, ensure that. This bill is patterned after a bill that passed the state of Florida and appears to be building on Mr. Hill's bill of SB 633 from last year. So we'd respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you. Any other witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Questions, comments, concerns from the members? The bill's been properly moved. Uh, would you like to close? I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is due pass as amended and re refer to appropriations. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Berry Hill? Aye. Berry Hill, aye. Block? Gaines? Aye. Gaines, aye. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Glazer? Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Hueso? Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. McGuire? Runner? Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. Currently has, Currently has eight. We'll keep the roll open for the absent members. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Morlock, SB, S, um, item 10, SB 1140. Thank you, Mr. Chair, colleagues. Uh, in the January 25th edition of 2014 of The uh, Economist, there was a piece titled The Not-So-Golden State for All Silicon Valley's Vibrancy California can be a lousy place to do business. It described that outside of Silicon Valley, there was another California, an inhospitable place plagued by overregulation, mindless bureaucracy, high taxes, and endless lawsuits. We're certainly seeing that Silicon Valley is doing quite well. LA County is below, and then the average is in between. So we're concerned about regulations, colleagues, and Senate Bill 1140 is an attempt to improve California's regulatory environment, and hopefully its worldwide image. Google is headquartered in Mountain View, California. It is on the cutting edge of autonomous vehicles and technology, I believe, is levels ahead of other options and maybe even state funding for rail transit. But our beloved Department of Motor Vehicles has proposed new guidelines which are more strict than those at the federal and national level. We could see the testing of this technology move out of our state. We're constantly looking for ways to provide affordable housing, but regulations have increased the base cost of building a home, pricing poorer families out of the market. My daughter and her husband recently purchased a home in the Milwaukee area for a cost that was comparable just to the fees that we file here in California. So what is the solution? It's extremely simple. This bill is only 12 lines. If the legislature passes a bill that requires the promulgation of regulations, then those new rules should sunset in two years. They will continue if the legislature approves them. Colleagues, we need to take ownership. If, a, if an agency issues new regulations that stunt our business community unnecessarily, we should either endorse it or, or stop it. We need to either give our Office of Administrative Law an aff affirmation or better direction. The Office of Administrative Law is doing a good job of interpreting legislature's intent, but we should take authority and accountability over the process. We need to restore checks and balances. If our unelected officials are clearly uh, understanding the legislature's intent, then this will be a very easy formality. If not, then, these, then those bearing the brunt of unnecessary overburdensome uh, rules and regulations that are, that are too costly to of a requirement, they should re receive some relief. And we should lead and give a guiding hand. We can all agree that in certain areas, regulations are a positive and necessary requirement. But if new regulations do not match what was voted for, Sacramento needs a safety valve to address them. Our business community tries to work with hundreds of state agencies that are run by unelected officials that produce thousands of regulations. The Office of Administrative Law reviews an average of 700 regulation packages per year. 
when the administrative branch's vision of a law's intent differs from the legislative branch and the resulting regulations have consequences which the legislature did not in intend, we need the tools to make the appropriate adjustments. Colleagues, SB 1140 seeks to restore checks and balances and I request an I vote. We must improve the impression that the rest of the world has on the Golden State. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. You have someone here to testify. Staff, we had someone, uh, but uh, traveling uh, arrangements failed to work out for him today, so I apologize. This bill was, you knew this bill was gonna be up, right? Oh, yeah, he, yes, yes, sir, I did. Okay. All right, <laughs> uh, any, uh, any witnesses in support of the bill, please come forward. Any witnesses in opposition? Questions, comments, concerns from the members? Senator Hernandez. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. <laughs> so I'd like, there's a LA Times article brought out a few months ago, I'd like to, if you don't mind, just Please. kind of a, a segment from it. Absolutely. California has spawned new business at one of the fastest rates in the nation over the last decade, and faster than the U.S. economy overall, the report found. The state is also a leader in job creation tied to those new businesses. In 2013, California added jobs for nearly established business faster than all but four four other states. That's all I have to say. <laughs> well stated. Senator Gaines. I want to thank uh, Senator Mar Marlock for bringing uh, your legislation forward. Uh, I think we have real challenges in terms of the regulatory environment in California uh, that does ask uh, or act as a um, a lid in uh, creation of jobs in California. And that if we believe in good government on both sides of the aisle, my, my belief is that we ought to be analyzing and holding accountable the regulators within the state. And that I think it's good government to have more legislative oversight. Uh, we could have committee hearings on a lot of these large bureaucracies that have a lot of authority, in some cases the authority to uh, promulgate regulation and at the same time uh, uh, assess fines on individuals within California. So uh, I applaud your uh, ability to, to look at a, a problem and see if we can shed light on it and figure out what regulations we really need and what we don't. There's a lot of overlap of regulation. Uh, there's a lot of regulation that's on the books that really ought to be taken off the books because it's not even um, reliable or not even used anymore today. So uh, thank you. Senator Barry Hill. Yeah, just kind of a comment. I, I think this is solid policy. We've got, we've got laws that have been on these books for, for decades in some cases that, that are completely irrelevant and don't work. Uh, so I think, it, I think it's a solid policy to take a look at this stuff after a couple of years. Uh, and I'll move this bill at the proper time, Mr. Chairman. Very well. Uh, any other questions, comments, or concerns from the members? Um, I, I appreciate your perspective, Ms. Senator, but I, I totally disagree with you. Uh, I believe that this bill is totally unnecessary. Uh, for multiple reasons in which my staff communicated to yours. Um, I think uh, Senator Hernandez uh, in his quote said it best. Um, and for that reason, I'll be recommending a no uh, on this bill. Uh, would you like to close? Well, if I could respectfully ask for an aye vote from the rest of the committee. Well, I'm quite sure we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, Thank is you. that your close? Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, Mr. Barry Hill moves the bill. The chair is recommending a no. Uh, please call the roll. Motion is due pass and re refer to the Rules Committee. Hall? No. Hall, no. Barry Hill? Aye. Barry Hill, aye. Block? Gaines? Aye. Gaines, aye. Galgiani? Galgiani, no. Glazer? Hernandez? No. Hernandez, no. Hill? No. Hill, no. Wayso? Laura? No. Laura, no. McGuire? Runner? Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. Okay, five no's, three yeses. We'll keep the roll open for the absent members. You've got some work to do.
Thank you, sir. All right. Senator Galgiani, would you like to present?